Welcome to the video. This is Criterium Dauphiné. Just finished Richie Port, as predicted. Um, I said he could win the Tour de France. He's won the Dauphiné now. First time ever he's done that. First time in 36 years. And Aussie, last Aussie being Phil Anderson won that back in 87, was it? It was a long time ago. Um, so here's some photos here. We'll get to the race highlights. We'll see the disc. The, every time I see a road a road disc in the World Tour, I just can't think. I can't avoid thinking gravel bike. And they're riding gravel with fat tires and just the disc brakes they don't need. So I'm going to flick through some fantastic photos. This is on Steep Hill TV. Some great, this is a beautiful, looks like a beautiful French summer. You know, people in the shorts and t-shirt. And this is this highlights the beauty of cycling, uh, professional road cycling. And that's just, I mean, I've ridden for all these places. It's amazing riding. It's one of the best riding in the world. It's in France. Look at those beautiful roads, rim brakes. Look at that rim brake team on the front. Um... Yeah, marginal gains. You've got the most, the richest, I harp on about, no, no, the, the most expensive, um, so I should say the biggest budget pro cycling team ever in cycling history, Team Ineos, aka Team Sky, and they're still using rim brakes. Yeah, they're using 100, you, you buy the brakes that Team Sky use for maybe 100, 100 bucks USD, second on Facebook Marketplace. That's and You have the same brake, literally the same brake technology. Durace 9100 brakes as the Team Sky. Look at that formation there. Just got Richie Port. You know, he's got all the, the Gs. Look at that. That's, a, that's like the dream team, isn't it? The dream team on the dream bike. 6.8 kilo bikes. Um, just stringing it out. And you see here the uh, Bora Crew. And again, look at those, all those disc brakes. You know, he's fantastic. For I love disc brakes on my gravel bike, mountain bike. But you just see the extra spokes. It's less aero. You got that big pizza cutter there. Just the crosswind, just the drag. And look at the strain on the face. Can we get to zoom in here? I'll oh, get zoom in here. So look at that. He's just thinking, man, why don't I have an SL6 rim brake? Why don't I have an SL1 rim brake? Look at these, you know, those, look at those, the big wheels got piled on. He did a really good ride as well. Um, but, you know, you definitely got a huge advantage on uh, on, disc, on rim brakes. You know, disc brakes, you got huge, if you've got disc brake advantage on, on the mud and stuff, you see they're piled on. He's looking super fresh. He says he hasn't made enough carbs last few, few races. Now he's just carbon up. And he's had a marvellous, <laughs> really marvellous time there. Obviously, he was far down in GC, so they didn't, really, didn't care too much, let him go. But he was the strongest in the break. You can sort of see that so was at Postberger. Just really about to bonk out a gun not enough carbs. And you see Capardon just really carving up today. Smash him at the gels. And this is a great photo. This is very interesting. It's very paparazzi, FBI, you know, disc brake mafia, rim brake cartel. This is, probably a, this is probably a photograph from an FBI agent in France uh, you know, undercover ops, black ops, rim brake cartel observation photo. And you see here one, two, three, four, five members of the rim brake cartel, AK Team Ineos. Uh, and they've got lightweight wheels, lightweight wheels, Melanchthon Gen 4 tubulars. And Richie looks to be using some Dura AC 40s, which are a little bit heavier. And I suspect the reason that is, is because Richie's bike is would be underweight if you have lightweights, which is a bit weird because you'd think they got lightweight wheels. But maybe Richie prefers the wider feel of the Durace wheels. It feels a bit more stable. These lightweight wheels are, I've got a set, and I've got these Durace C40s, and the C40s do feel a bit nice, a bit more stable. So maybe Richie's thinking, yeah, you know, I could add weight to my bike, or I could just add weight to the rim a little bit, and just, just scrape in that 6.8 kilo limit. Who knows? Who knows? But um, you can see there, he's Richie's ditched his water bottles, so he's relying on water from, uh, from the other guys there. So he's... He's looking in form. He's got the deep, that deep, rich tan going on there. Now, other riders, he's the only Team Sky rider who ever gets a tan. I don't, I don't understand what it is. He's always tanned up. He's like he's uh, got a solarium in his bedroom. He's always looking very super, super tanned, um, especially in January. He's, he always looks fit um, in January. And uh, this is Pardon here. You can tell pro cyclist knees with the low body fat and the, uh, the scarring from the crashes there. You know, just touching the brakes a bit. So, yeah, some great photos here. Snow, one minute, sunshine the next. Looks a bit... Doesn't look too cold up the top of the hill because you see people wearing shorts, etc. People aren't wearing gloves. So it doesn't look too cold up there. Even though it looks cold. It's probably like maybe 10, 12 degrees up the top of these climbs there. And that's... Um, what, a great, what a great photo that one is. Wow. And again, you can't really use your brakes too much in these corners. You use your brakes, you lose position. The guy... Right behind you can crash up you. So they, they rarely use the brakes in these corners, you know. It's a great shot there. Richie going for the field. <laughs> Looks like it, doesn't it? That's a great one there. You wouldn't want to have too much allergens uh, this time of year, would you? So, pardon. Last two Ks to go. Really going for it. 
another great photo there. Um, but yeah, this, this bike's like 7.5 kilos. 7.5 kilo. Makes you think, how would he, how much faster would he be on a 6.8 kilo Merida Scultura? If he was on a 2013 Merida, he would have gone even faster. You know, he, um, looking pretty happy there. His, his face indicates he's really gone all out. Color coming back into his face. So his, his color's sort of gone out of his face here. He's really just on the limit there. And the color's coming back in there. So his recovery is pretty good. His eyes do look reasonably flesh, fresh pupils, but he does have a little bit of a, you know, fatigue, which is which is going to be normal from two big days on the bike. Uh, Richie Port, little eyes look a bit fresher, look very intense, and you can sort of see his physiology changes. You can see Pardon looking a bit more facial retentive, uh, fluid wise. Again, not dissing or not critiquing, just just observe, observing here. And you got Richie Port looking very, very dry, uh, not in a bad way, but just looking super tanned, super flushed all over, good clear skin complexion, a little bit of a bicep popping through there, maybe he's flexing there. Um, holding a water bottle, but yeah, he, he looks he looks in, he looks to have good blood volume in his neck. He looks in, he's looking on form there. This little motor there, it's pretty cool. Um, Pardon is uh, looking very stoked. Big now, he, this guy will always remember him. Now he'll never be able to go off the front like that ever again. <laughs> he'll be a marked man forever. This is the podium. We got Lucenico. Look at that veins, man. Look at that. Look at that veins like a worm going through there. Everyone does the obligatory quad flex but you can see Richie Port has got that uh, sarcopenic kneecap going on there very lean which is what you got to be you know my legs are always this lean as well you got uh, Garen Thomas feeling the feeling the cold and put some leg warmers on there get that recovery going there you see Garen Thomas ready for the Tour de France Richie Port as well he could be a factor he could win the Tour de France if Richie Port I said it last week I'll say it again if Richie Port wins the Tour de France this year I wouldn't be surprised he's, got, he's on his best bike again uh, he's definitely a factor Luntzenko though also Got that right bitch tan, their veins popping everywhere. And um, it's going to be interesting times, interesting times. Um, Richie Port there, thumbs up. You can see uh, the stature here. Like, this is just a, you know, female Astana. It looks like a, uh, you know, Sunyur helper, maybe. Who, who knows who it is? I don't know. But you can see how how much, uh, how fit Richie looks. As a pro cycle, it's very small. You know, his hands... You know, obviously there's different frame rates and stuff, but he just he looks very in condition there. Big watts per kilo, etc. Let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at stage seven photos. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think. Oh, they're giving Chris Horner a shout out as well. That's pretty cool. Got Lantern Rouge out there as well. Um, I think I was the first channel to do cycling commentary, and it's great to see Lantern Rouge really picking up. He's also an Aussie kid, Aussie lad. And I've uh, got Chris Horner as well, so those guys are going far and up and beyond. It's very cool to see. So you can see that um, Stage 7 results, there wasn't much in it, was there? In terms of overall GC, the difference between, you know, Port and Garrett and Lusenko. Yeah, that's how many rim breaks won this tour again. They won the Velta, sorry, they won the uh, Giro. They did win the Velta last year as well. But they won the Giro last year. This year, the margins are very small. And the, the margins are so small, rim breaks can make a difference. So you can see here Valverde doing well, you know. And just look at the legs here on uh, Lutsenko. Look at the, you know, just looking at that, that, that contractile tissue separation there, the, the glycogen retention, it's that East Block look, doing very well. But look at, the, look at these heavy wheels, man. That's crazy, isn't it? But again, these guys don't really have a say. they just got to do a disc brake for pay, you know. There's a little bike track along. That's pretty cool. Wow. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. But yeah, the only people running disc, uh, rim brakes this, this uh, tour, that's pretty cool, is the uh, Ineos crew. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? The only team out there. Look at this, all disc, disc, disc. disc not, like, like I said, 97% of the tour, the Peloton is on rim bra uh, disc brakes. This guy's going for it. You know, yeah, it's just crazy. Bro. Like, look at the tyre clearance these bikes have got now. <laughs> that's Pierre Roland. He's thinking, give me my, give me my Super 6 back. I don't need this. These bike, these road, these bike bikes are basically gravel bikes. You could run 35 uh, mil tires or plus in here. These guys are running 12, 25 mil tires. I mean, look at the look at the gaps in the look at that clearance there. It's just very unaero compared to uh, these bikes here. Just tight clearances, less you know, velocities and stuff like that. Crazy. 
Valverde, the 41-year-old, wins the stage. Um, Port there as well, ready for action. Look at the difference in the bikes. It, it just looks like they've turned up the gravel bikes. And you got Port on, a, on an actual race bike. Look at that. Look at the difference. Look at, the, look at all the how skinny Port's wheels look. And look at these big wheels behind. You know, it's like that. This is very... Uh, you got mass. Coop Cess. Cess Coop. Cess Coop. Coop Cess. Um, <laughs> I forget his name. Um, Pardon. You know. Sepkus. And uh, Pardon at the back. Just because his mouth shut almost. And Mass is going for it. Richie Port's going for it. Interesting times. 10k to go. So yeah. On the front there. Mouth closed. Not a good thing to do. Just about to bonk I reckon. Um, Sepkus and uh, Pardon just looking behind. Thinking yep. We're going to go. You know. You wouldn't have put money on this guy beforehand, but you would now. He's, he's definitely proved himself. He's earned his position there. Heavy bike, man. This Savella would be about seven, as spec, seven point, seven point four kilos. The R fives are pretty heavy, and these would be tubeless. So about seven three, seven four, seven five for the R five. Looks like a fifty four centimeter. They ain't the lightest like they used to be. Savella used to have the lightest bikes in Peloton. Now they've got some of the heaviest. Um, yeah, crazy. It's a good shot there. It's looking very lean. Um, thoracic capacity there, quite high. Just all lungs. All lungs, this boy. Boa dials. No laces there. Wins. Puts a hand up. Looking very happy with himself. Um, very good. Richie Port. Looking like got that Lunga face going on there. Yeah, he's got Shimano C40 tubulars. Quite a wide rim. Um, so, yeah. I think... Did these guys add weights to their bike? Pinarello's not really going to disclose that because it, you know it'll make the uh, the disc brake models look bad. You know, which pro team is adding weight to the disc brake bikes now? <laughs> Remember, everyone used to do that in the past. Cervelo did, Specialized did, Cannondale did, you know, Marita did. Everyone had weights to their bikes. Now no one's doing that except for maybe Pinarello. But if if that is the case, it wouldn't be disclosed because it would make the uh, you know, look how small. Richie is. <coughs> this guy's small. And then Richie looks even smaller. So yeah, Richie Port could win the Tour de France. That's the video. That's the deal. Tight. Marginal gains wins again. Rimbrake Cartel takes another race. Crazy, man. This is this is in this is unheard of. Road cycling is the only sport I'm aware of where there's such a disparity in the quality of product now. Like they actually the other teams are getting product that's going to make them go backwards. You know, in terms of performances compared to a forwards. It's 2021. The riders should have the best product out there. Not the stuff that rubs and tweaks and warps and bends easy and mechanics hate working on it. It's 2021. The bike should be getting better and better and better. Not worse.